So for a lot of my projects, I love using lithium drill batteries. They charge quickly. They're designed to output a pretty decent amount of current. They get all the circuitry required to charge, discharge, and monitor the state of every cell in this battery pack just built right into it. And it's in quite a nice little robust case. So when I found some for sale for $20 each brand new, I, I just had to buy like a pile of them. So I went into Tinkercad and I designed a dock that I could just 3D print and just slide my batteries into. I also ordered a bunch of voltage converters to step up or down the voltage to widen the range of applications I could use these for. And I'll get more into that later in this video. So for a lot of my projects moving forward, I've just been using drill batteries for like everything. I use it for things like DC motor control, LED lights, brushless motor power supply for my longboard. I use it for my high voltage arc generators. And I even use it to power a quad I built for my kids. And believe it or not, I even use drill batteries to power a drill, but not just any drill, like an old NICAD drill that the NICAD batteries crapped out. So I just duct tape my dock onto the base of it after connecting it in there and just you put it on there and away you go. Yeah, it works so good. I mean, I had it lying around forever and uh, yeah, I don't usually throw stuff out because I have a uh, bit of a hoarding problem. And even the shirt I'm wearing right now that I made for a previous year's Halloween is, is actually powered by drill batteries. Like, woo! I want to show you a couple of the different projects I've worked on. Hopefully, it can inspire you to work on some of your own. And yeah, we're just going to get to it. Come on! So I'm, I want to give you a bare bones overview of how I put some of this stuff together. But, but first, I just want to give you just a little disclaimer on using drill batteries. If you don't really know what you're doing and you don't know how to read the ratings on the battery or don't know how to determine the demands of your load on whatever you're designing for the power supply, you, you probably shouldn't be just connecting a power supply to it. So I, I just recommend just doing some self-education on this stuff. It really doesn't take much of an oversight to, to cause a pretty serious issue. And I'm sure I'll, I'll have a video eventually of a whole bunch of stories of times that I've gotten into a little bit of trouble with not quite knowing what I was doing. So I got this electric lawnmower brand new for under 80 bucks. The, the reason was just because the battery was missing. So these batteries for this mower cost like 130, 140 bucks, something stupid like that. It runs on a 40 volt battery that I just don't have and I'm not going to buy. I have to figure something out. But to get the 40 volt battery pack that I need, I'm, I'm going to need to connect two of my batteries together in series. So to do this, we're going to take the positive terminal for one battery pack and connect it to the negative terminal on the other. When doing this, it's important that I use two fully charged batteries. The state of charge it has to be the same if you're connecting two batteries together in series. If it's not the same, then you're going to get an uneven amount of current uh, from the battery pack from one of them and, and it's going to cause problems. So you're going to want to make sure that you uh, use two batteries with an equal state of charge. Now I just need to print a couple of my battery docks, install the contacts and the wires and connect my new 40 volt battery to my mower and boom. Oh yeah. But not everything's going to fall nicely into that 20 volt scale. This 500 watt brushless DC motor I used for my kids quad, it requires an input voltage of 42 to 52 volts. Now that's kind of frustrating when I can only do things in increments of 20. So I could do 40, I could do 60, but at 42 to 52, it's just, that's the range that I can't do with my battery pack. So this is where the converter comes in. So using the same 40 volt setup as I used for my motor, two batteries in series, instead of connecting the battery pack directly to my load, I'm gonna use a 600 watt voltage boost converter in line between the battery pack and my load. Now I can boost my voltage up as much as I need to, up to 80 volts, I think is what this 600 watt one goes to. And I'm gonna measure the dimensions of this converter and I'm gonna revisit my Tinkercad design for battery packs. And I'm just gonna make some uh, a new design that incorporates two batteries, plus it also incorporates the 600 watt boost converter into one nice little easy to use package. I also made sure to include a spot for easy access fuse. Um, just because you, you got to put a fuse in there, especially with something like this. The boost converter does have a fuse built into it. Just it's easier for me to have an external fuse that blows that I can just change than to have to rip it all apart just to get to that internal fuse. So last winter, I recorded this really good video of me just setting up the quad really quick just to demonstrate how it works. So you see, I just docked the batteries just right onto the back. Uh, the boost converter is integrated into that 3D printed case there. Um, then you just turn the switch on, hit the throttle, and away you go. So uh, this past summer, me and the kids would take the quad out all the time. Just, there's just lots of fun. You get about 20 minutes out of it. And uh, yeah, yeah, it's a blast.
and I started working on a new project for this video. Now it, it kind of grew and grew, and because uh, uh, I mean I have ADHD, so everything's like ah, I didn't have the cool thing. Oh, I'm gonna make a bigger. I'm gonna make a brighter. So uh, instead of having a uh, putting it as part of this video, I'm just gonna create a new video and call it part two. And yeah, so just keep an eye out for that. Like, subscribe, all that jazz to to make sure that you're keeping track of when that's gonna come out. So like I was just saying, please feel free to like and subscribe. Uh, if there's anything you guys think I can't power with drill batteries, please put it in the comments and I might just try to prove you wrong. I mean, there's obviously something stupid you could put in like an electric car or something. And you know, if maybe if I become a big YouTuber, I would totally do that. But uh, I, dad, single income, you know, don't have budget for like billion dollars of the batteries right now but yeah i would gladly take on any challenge that i could afford so yeah please uh, put it in the comments if you have any ideas and i hope you guys take it easy